Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 8. Today we're going to be doing my breakdown for Episode 18 of Season 8. This was an insane episode. I would say this is probably the best episode of the entire season. I absolutely loved it from start to finish. There were so many shocking moments, so many twists and turns that I was completely not expecting. And we need to talk about that Diggle moment because that really came out of nowhere. I had no idea he was going to be in this episode and it was such a great delight. But without further ado, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any future DCTV videos later this year. Okay, so we have full on spoilers in this video, so that's your warning. Let's go ahead and jump right into this because there is so much to talk about and break down and it all leads into the two part season finale that we're going to be having starting next week and then finishing the week afterwards. I can't wait to cover it with you guys and I'm going to be uploading the videos right after the episodes come out. I haven't done that in the last month or so, just been very busy with other filming jobs in the day and that's why I haven't been able to do it because if you guys didn't know, in the UK we have to watch the show in the middle of the night and it's not very practical if you have to work very early in the morning and so I just haven't been able to watch it late at night. So. I've been uploading the videos later in the day, just like today, so I apologize for the late upload, but the video is here, and hopefully you enjoy this. So let's get into the opening. So the opening starts in the original style. You know, the, you have to believe in the impossible, and the, my name is Barry Allen, but instead, this opening is twisted, and it's with Mina. Mina's doing the voiceover, and we see her on screen as she runs through this forest with her kind of black and white lightning, which obviously is very artificial, as we've been told in the previous episode. But something is off about it, as Barry helps out Mina with her training in this forest, and he notices some odd things at this point about her speed. And it has actually been a bit like erratic and you know he's been attacked by her a couple of times and the way that his speed and her speed interact is very curious it basically neutralizes as it interacts with Barry's speedster energy and basically takes it out and puts him out of commission pretty much so it's the complete opposite and what is opposite of a positive force it's a negative force and that is what we get into later in the episode when it's revealed that Mina's speed force machine is actually a negative speed force machine. Okay, so Cecile gains new powers. We see her emotions in physical form as a group of robbers come into this bank where Cecile is trying to make a deposit. Obviously, the deposit is just like a cheap excuse for them to put Cecile in this situation where she is forced to kind of overcome maybe her fears and the way that she thinks her powers work because she's able to do much more than she thought she could do and so she's able to tap into their emotions you see the yellow kind of surrounding all of the people who are just there like the civilians and the staff who are obviously in fear and then the red surrounding the criminals who are there obviously threatening so they have anger and that is the emotions literally popping off and like emanating around them and she's able to literally take those emotions and override the people in a way that basically puts them out of commission so that is a big new development for her powers and she goes full-on vigilante at the end of the episode we get like one short scene it's probably one of the less good scenes in this episode that kind of weighs it down but i'm gonna say it barely weighs it down at all and this episode's still like a 9.5 out of 10 because the scenes are so short like, this was the longest scene, and then she's checked up in Star Labs, but that's pretty much it, and then she has one scene at the end, but it's very, very short, so we can overlook it. Anyway, so let's go back to the juicy stuff. So Barry visits Mina as an acquaintance of the Flash at Fast Track Labs to see the device. So Barry sees the decades ahead technology from the 23rd century that helped Mina gain her speedster powers, and at that point, Mina introduces the man who helped her make it. Eobard Thorn, and at that point you're like oh crap S is about to hit the fan sorry can't swear but I want to swear at that moment because I was like wow that was a great reveal and you can see the look in Barry's eyes he is completely shocked 
and things get heated very fast as Barry confronts Eobard almost in an instant, even in front of Mina. But it seems that this version of Eobard is completely oblivious to his past actions, but Barry's not buying it. And so Barry still is going in with this mission, being like, this is Eobard, he knows what he's doing, he's trying to use Mina for his own good. But it's revealed that he has a form of amnesia, he has bad memory, but he is still able to retain his intelligence and his mind, but remembers little about his personal life and things that happened in his past, future, or really present. It seems from when he woke up, that's all he can remember onwards from that time when he met Mina at this job interview that we later see in the episode. And that happens in the form of flashbacks as Mina interviews Eobard in the past. He completes part of her research in a matter of seconds about creating a speedster as he reveals that's what Mina has been working on. She's completely amazed and from then on they start working together and the rest is history and he reveals that he knows how to create this speed force device. And obviously in the present, it's a reality. It's something very real and very much so can give Mina speedster powers. And it's revealed the reason why he knows how to create this machine is this version of Eobard just remembered it from his past somewhere inside of his head. You know, the schematics and the way that the machine works is pretty much exactly the machine that Reverse Flash, the normal Reverse Flash, made in the 23rd century. And so Barry tells Chester that he just saw Thorn at Fast Track Labs and he is the one that created the machine. So he goes over to Lian Yu once again and he confronts our normal version of Reverse Flash. And so at this point, you're like, hmm, what is actually going on here? And basically, the flashbacks in the episode are giving proper context about Reverse Flash in the timeline. And at this point, you know, with Barry going up to Lian Yu, confronting Harrison Wells' version of Thorn on Lian Yu, it becomes pretty clear that the version of Thorn that we have with the Matt Letcher face is in fact just a different version of Thorn. It's not our Thorn, although Barry obviously has to double check, like, has he put on his original face once again? And is that why he's back and he's pretending and trying to use Mina? But Thorn reveals that he doesn't really know what's going on at all. He reveals that the device that Mina and Eobard made was a Speed Force device that he made a long time in the future, and Mina's speed is negative and that it will corrupt her, like it corrupted him. And also he mentions how Mina is not a speedster in the future and how she's not remembered, so pretty much this is a new timeline and that's why she has been brought in However, normally she wouldn't have been brought in. So Barry goes off, he runs back to Central City, but while that is happening, out of absolutely nowhere, John Diggle shows up. What a surprise, and we finally get answers about what's been going on with him. He's been showing up on all of these shows. He even showed up on Supergirl before it ended. He showed up on Batwoman, Legends of Tomorrow, showed up on The Flash, and... Superman Lois as well, and he's also coming back to Superman Lois at the end of this season, so that's two more cameos from him in the Arrowverse, which means there is only one more this season that we haven't seen on Superman Lois, looking forward to that. But Diggle shows up, and he has a big reunion with Wells, because the last time that those two met, Eobard was still pretending to be Wells. I loved the music in the scene, I loved how dramatic it was, and I loved the reunion. This scene really kind of sold the episode for me. I think it definitely has cemented it as one of the best of the season. And so Diggle thinks that Reverse Flash can help him crack open the device and the case that he has been holding on to for all of this time that's been plaguing him because he's been trying to crack it open. But at first, he didn't want to open it, but now he wants to see what's inside of it. And Eobard agrees to help him out if he agrees to show him what's inside of it for his own personal reasons. And so back with Mina, we get Mina who is angered by Barry who is antagonizing Eobard as he returns to Fast Track and confronts them. And so she's in the process of trying to amp up her speed so it becomes permanent. And so she goes into the machine, she screams. It's not that believable, the screen, if I'm completely honest. But that's just like one hiccup with the acting. I thought she was pretty good. And she goes like, leave him alone. And then 
she gets juiced with all of this speed force energy obviously it's a negative speed force energy it's not just normal speed force energy and so Barry's knocked out his powers are neutralized and pretty much they're cut out from you know Chester and any other help until they wake up and so she's out in the middle of the city trying to get unlimited power by going to the dam because apparently that is the biggest source of electricity in all of Central City but with reverse flash when we go back to him, so not the good version of Eobar, but the bad version. On Lian Yu, he reveals that the cubes show up at people's crossroads. So he knows about the cube that Diggle has, and it's actually very smart that Diggle went to him, because obviously Eobard has knowledge of the future, and that's why he's able to disclose this information, because he knows it. And apparently it is closed, because John doesn't actually want to accept its power and only will it open when he opens up to the device. And so the Reverse Flash guides him as he closes his eyes, kind of in typical Reverse Flash fashion, like Harrison Wells has taught Barry in the past and various other people as well. And so he's able to tap into the device, and there is a great cosmic moment right here as John sees the entire multiverse, the entire galaxy. We see like various cuts of different points throughout the entire universe and it's just such a great moment and so at that point John becomes quite overwhelmed and he is seeing absolutely everything so he knows what he's getting into if he accepts it but at this point he chooses to deny the device and it's dosing him in green light and with that green light obviously we've been thinking oh this is Green Lantern and so at the point that he throws it and it disintegrates just before it disintegrates it looks like there was a lantern symbol in it and that is definitely what Eobard was hinting towards with the fact that you know this was forged from you know wherever it was in the multiverse in the universe and it would have given him cosmic powers if he accepted it that being John Diggle of course but with him denying it you see it kind of disappear because now it's going to go off and try and find someone else who is at a crossroads and so he denied his last chance to be someone powerful as it was trying to make him into someone else something else I love that they use that quote the Oliver Queen quote from like every episode's intro to Arrow because that's literally what he became. Obviously, this is like a different case for Diggle. This is a cosmic kind of deal that he's been given compared to Arrow when he returned from the island. Obviously, he had to become something else. And so I love that callback. I thought it was a really nice line. And so apparently, there is no power in the universe more powerful than the love that he has for his family. That is what Diggle says. And you get an Arrow flashback seeing the family. It's very nice. And he says that Reverse Flash will never get what he feels. That chance between a cosmic destiny or being a father, that was a very obvious choice for him. And so this leads into the other Eobard, as he is completely different and actually humane and would sacrifice his own choice, his own selfish choice of what he wants to save someone else. And so Eobard, the good Eobard, reveals to Barry that he loves Mina and that is what's been driving him this whole time. We get a very emotional, great moment for Reverse Flash and an amazing twist with the reveal that he's in love with Mina and that he's actually properly emotional. You can see it in his eyes, he's tearing up. Great acting by Matt Letcher, some of the best acting I think of the entire season and so it's so incredibly believable, I was really into the moment. And he thinks in the past that he was destined to be a speedster. That's just the feeling he had inside of him, so that's why he created the block machine to give himself powers. But there was only one way to save Mina after she suffered a cardiac arrest because of her heart condition. And so he instantly gave up on his dream to save Mina, give her powers so she can live on. And that is a huge sacrifice for Eobard, and in that moment Barry knows this is not the Eobard that I normally know. And so the two of them shake hands after this beautiful montage. I really, really liked it. I thought it was a very touching scene. I thought it was some of the best reverse flash content that we've had in a very long time. Probably since season one. And so Mina is infected by the negative speed force and she faces off against Barry after this scene where they have this confrontation because Mina is 
dosed up on the speed force energy and Barry can't stop her as she draws lightning from the sky and strikes Barry. His powers are neutralized, but Eobard shows up out of the van where Chester is, snapping Mina out of her speed force trance from her evil trance from, you know, stepping too far over the line that the negative speed force literally takes over her. And so here's her lightning rod, it's revealed. Thought this was a great moment. And Barry actually thinks there is a way to work around the negative speed force machine's problems and actually use it for good to keep Mina having powers, but just alter it slightly. So that's interesting and that will definitely continue on into the next episode and we'll see where Mina picks up. Okay, so Ray Palmer shows up out of nowhere and that is another cameo that was a complete surprise. I had no idea that was going to happen, so I was like, what's up when he showed up? And he explains that the Time Wraith saved Reverse Flash, or the version of Eobard that we see in the present right now, who is actually good. And he saved Reverse Flash as penance for his past crimes, so he would basically have to go on spending years to protect the timelines until he ultimately died. And so the big question is, who is this Eobard? Well, Barry thinks that the Time Wraiths brought him here after that to Mina. And that very much so could be the case, and that's where we leave that storyline for this episode. But then we go back to Cecile, she's all vigilante. Not a great scene, just very short though, so that's acceptable. And then a very short scene with Mark, who's talking to Caitlin. Obviously, Caitlin is away. That's because I believe Danielle Panabaker was pregnant. And so he found a new way to bring back for us, and so they're back in with their plan. But the final scene of the episode is very curious because Reverse Flash is paid a visit by the forces, aka Dion, the Steel Force, in his cell. But what does he want? He says he's an old friend, but also a new friend, all rolled up in one. So how is Dion different, and what has happened to him? Why has he been corrupted, and why does he want Reverse Flash to fulfill his destiny? And he's pretty much going to release him, and the final two episodes is going to be them trying to stop Reverse Flash. So, wow. What an episode. I really hope you enjoyed this video, because I really enjoyed making it, because there was a lot to break down. Sorry that it was released so late after the Flash aired, but I appreciate if you share this video, you watch it, and you go back, scroll back if you missed anything, because this episode was so dense. There was so much that we had to talk about, so hopefully I covered most of it. But I'll be sure to make a couple more videos in regards to like the Green Lantern stuff and anything else that you're interested in me talking about separately in proper detail. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications, and you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.